reverse psychology to make a girl flirt with you and chase your attention. Hey everyone, it's Anna here. Have you ever wondered if there's a way to shift the dynamics and get her to make the first move? Well, today we are diving into the intriguing world of reverse psychology. We will uncover some clever strategies that can subtly encourage a woman to chase after your attention and even initiate flirting. So if you are curious about how to get her to be the one trying to catch your eye, keep on watching. You're about to learn some secrets that can change the way that you interact forever. Let's get started. The Art of Reverse Psychology Alright guys, let's kick things off by diving deep into the heart of the matter, reverse psychology. Now I'm sure you've heard of this concept before, right? When applied correctly, reverse psychology can amplify attraction, making interactions more engaging and flirtatious. But remember, this isn't about manipulation. It's about presenting yourself in a way that challenges and intrigues, encouraging her to be more proactive in the dance of flirtation. Appearing unattainable. Think about a tantalizing dessert kept just out of your reach. Makes you want it even more, right? Similarly, when you position yourself as someone slightly elusive, her interest is naturally piqued. Now guys, this doesn't mean acting aloof or indifferent. It's about maintaining your own interests, passions, and life outside of the budding relationship. By showing her that you are not entirely available at every beck and call, you are indirectly suggesting that your time is valuable. And believe me, this can be incredibly attractive Active, pushing her to engage more assertively. Contradictory compliment. Here's a fun one. Instead of the usual, you look beautiful tonight, imagine saying, you know, that outfit is so unlike you, but you somehow make it work beautifully. These contradictory compliments are disarming because they are unexpected. They are playful teases that keep her guessing and can lead to light-hearted banter. It tells her, I notice things about you that perhaps others don't. This nuanced appreciation can ignite flirtation as she's keen to dig deeper into what you really think. Flirting with ambiguity. You know those moments in suspense movies where you're left hanging on every word and sure of what's actually coming next? That's the thrill of ambiguity in flirting. By not wearing your heart on your sleeve immediately, you become like a book she can't put down because she's dying to know the next chapter. Now I'm not saying to be aloof or confusing, rather it's just about giving her enough to intrigue her, but not too much that the mystery is gone. For instance, instead of plainly saying, I had a good time tonight, Night, you might opt for, tonight was interesting. It begs the question, how was it interesting? She will be left mulling over your words and trust me, she will be more inclined to flirt to get more clarity. The strategy of delay. Ever been on the edge of your seat waiting for the climax of a thrilling movie? That anticipation, my friends, is gold. In our instant gratification world, a slight delay in response can be exhilarating. I'm not saying keep her waiting for days, but sometimes giving it a few hours before replying can stoke interest. It's a reminder that you have a life, passions, and commitments outside of the budding relationship. However, and this is crucial, always ensure your delays are genuine. Artificially creating waiting games can backfire and that's not the road that we want to take, right? The power of a challenge. All right, picture this. There's a challenging mountain trail that everyone's saying is very tough to tackle. Now, wouldn't the idea of conquering it become even more tempting? Similarly, humans often gravitate towards things that test their mettle. So by playfully challenging her in conversations, you are encouraging her to step up and engage more, perhaps even flirtatiously. Could be as simple as saying, I bet you can't guess what I did last weekend. This piques her interest and before you know it, she's engaging, flirting and trying to uncover more. Agreeing to disagree. Here's a twist, guys. We've all been in discussions where everyone nods and agrees, but what if, out of the blue, you take a contrary stance? It's not about being confrontational, but offering a different viewpoint playfully. Suppose she says, I think classic movies are the best. You could counter with, really? I find modern films more intriguing. Instantly, you've set the stage for a lively, flirtatious debate. Remember, the aim isn't to argue, but to create dynamic conversations that she will remember. Maybe you're right. All right, fellas, here's a surprising twist. Sometimes the best way to advance is to just take a step back. Ever been in a heated discussion where you suddenly say, 
maybe you're right, even if just for a moment. This unexpected surrender can disarm and intrigue her. By admitting defeat, you've not only showcased maturity, but also opened a playful avenue for her to delve deeper. And what does that often lead to? You guessed it, flirtatious teasing. The sudden shift in dynamics can prompt her to engage in a lighter, more flirtatious manner. But remember guys, it's essential to use this tactic genuinely. Authenticity is the name of the game. Shift the spotlight. Picture this, you are in the midst of a playful conversation and she throws a flirtatious comment your way. Instead of responding in kind, turn the tables. If she says, I noticed you've got a great smile, you could retort with, trying to distract with compliments and watch your game. This subtle shift places the spotlight back on her, making her the pursuer in this flirtatious dance. By redirecting the flirtation, you are offering her a playful challenge and stirring up a delightful flirtatious tension. Reading between the lines, Let's dive into the realm of subtext. You know those moments in classic films where everything meaningful is said in what's not explicitly stated? That's subtext, and it could be your best ally in building intrigue. Instead of saying, I find you attractive, you might comment, there's something about this conversation that feels different. By speaking in subtext, you are inviting her to decode the underlying message, prompting her to engage more deeply and yes, more flirtatiously. It's like giving her a puzzle where the reward is the thrill of deciphering your intent. It's probably not your thing. On to our next playful strategy. There's a rebel in all of us that wants to prove others wrong. By saying you probably wouldn't enjoy this indie band or skydiving might not be your thing, you are igniting that spark of defiance. The chances are she will retort with a playful, oh really, try me. This isn't about doubting her preferences, but offering a playful challenge that she will likely rise to and in doing so, ramp up the flirtation factor. You wouldn't understand. Telling someone you wouldn't understand is like handing them a locked diary and saying they can't read it. The natural inclination? They will want to prove they can relate and connect. When you use this line, you are actually tapping into her innate desire to understand and to bridge the gap. She might respond with a playful, try me, or in earnest, why do you think so? Either way, this opens up an avenue for deeper and often flirtatious conversations. But remember, the goal isn't to belittle her, but to create an environment where she feels motivated to connect. I'll tell you, but... Now picture this, you are about to spill a secret, then pause, saying, I'll tell you, but... Instantly, her interest is piqued. It's like seeing the trailer of a movie, but not the full feature. By withholding just a little, you are drawing her into your world, making her eager to learn more, and in that quest to uncover the unsaid, flirtation naturally bubbles up. It's all about striking the balance, guys. Share enough to intrigue, but not so much that the mystery evaporates. I don't think we'd get along. Throwing this curveball can lead to some fascinating outcomes. When you say, I don't think we'd get along, it's counterintuitive to the usual compliments, catching her off guard. Rather than pushing her away, it often draws her closer, prompting questions like, why do you say that? This can become a playful debate about your supposed differences, opening doors to lighthearted teasing and flirtatious banter. You were probably too busy for this. This is a classic, guys. By suggesting she might be too occupied, you are indirectly challenging her priorities. It's not about making her feel guilty, but more about presenting an opportunity she might not want to miss. In response, she might flirtatiously counter with, busy or not, try me, or maybe for you, I can make the time. This tactic subtly shifts the dynamics, making her the one to express interest. You might find this boring, but... By starting with, you might find this boring, but you are actually throwing down a subtle challenge. It's as if you are testing the waters to see if she is different from the rest. The underlying message, can you appreciate the things not everyone does? And in most cases, she will want to prove that she's not just anyone. She's unique, curious, and absolutely interested in what you have to say. The result, a delightful dance of flirtation where she takes the lead in showing her keen interest. Most people can't keep up with me. Who doesn't love a good challenge? By suggesting that most can't keep pace with your interests, your energy or hobbies, you are indirectly nudging her competitive spirit. Her likely response might be a flirtatious, oh, is that a challenge? Or a confident, try me. By positioning yourself this way, you are creating an enticing game where she's motivated to step up and show she's not just most people. I usually don't share this with everyone. Everyone, including her, wants to feel special. By prefacing your statement with, 
I usually don't share this with everyone, you are granting her exclusive access to a part of your world. The exclusivity suggests trust and intimacy, and the result, she'll lean in, both metaphorically and perhaps literally, eager to know the guarded secret. This creates a shared moment, an inside joke of sorts, fostering a flirtatious bond. So you've tapped into the art of reverse psychology, now dive into compliments that leave a lasting mark or uncover the reasons behind her protective flirting techniques. Your journey continues here. Thanks for tuning in. Like, share and stay subscribed by updating.